We've all had to deal with masks in the age of COVID-19, but after more than a year of dealing with this piece of the pandemic, a column at carolinajournal.com carries this headline, Moving Beyond the Mask and Our Culture of Fear. Its author is Ray Nothstein, opinion editor at Carolina Journal, and masks and whether we should wear masks, that really has been one of the big debates in recent months. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of folks that say once you have the vaccine available, you know, why is there not a loosening of restrictions on masks? And really, though, with this piece, I kind of wanted to focus a little bit more on the culture of fear than the masks itself and whether, you know, we should be wearing masks or shouldn't be wearing masks. There's all there's there's competing, you know, scientific data on this. But I was really interested in this culture of fear and what it means for us going forward. Yeah. In fact, you take a look at this and say that masks are really just the symptom. Right. I, I think that's exactly right. Getting on social media, whether it was earlier in the pandemic, in the middle of the pandemic, or uh, hopefully here towards the end, at least of government restrictions, um, the thing that really caught my eye was seeing some of the meltdowns by people. Uh, maybe some of the viewers here have experienced them themselves. If someone wasn't wearing a mask, uh, there was, of course, a uh, somewhat infamous one with the lady going hysterical in an elevator. There's a compilation video of, you know, people on ski slopes and they're sanitizing their ski gloves while they're wearing them on, while they're wearing them. So to me, it just kind of highlighted this deep culture of fear, which I think is abnormal. I think it should be abnormal for if somebody is a person of faith or maybe if they look to a higher truth or higher power to have an irrational um, fear, especially during this pandemic for younger and healthier people who have a very, very high survivability rate if they contract COVID. To me, I just think it's sort of a, a symptom maybe of our modern times. While it's great to have modern medicine, that's all, those are all good things. It's great to have modern treatments, uh, especially for COVID, that it does create, uh, you, you see this symptom with people where they're just very, very fearful. And I think part of that may be the media are playing a role into that and maybe dividing people politically, but also just uh, scaring people to be afraid. But I do think that there's an element to whether the, you know, it comes stems from secularism or it stems from just this whole idea of self-preservation that people are genuinely, genuinely fearful. And I think that's empowered a lot of the government response as well. In fact, one of the more interesting lines in the column is our modern society with the advances in medicine, which are good, of course, tends to lead us to fear death more than anything else in the world. And then you say in the next paragraph, there is no ability to contextualize survival rates for people who contracted COVID-19. Uh, this is something that we're probably going to have to address in some way, regardless of what happens with COVID-19. If people are this fearful that's got to be a negative sign for our society. Right. I think it's absolutely a negative sign to live in fear, to live in a state of just constant timidity and, and being kind of quaking in your boots. What it does is it creates a vacuum, right, where the state can come in and be a caretaker and, and take over you. So it expands uh, maybe not just the federal government, but the state governments. Uh, it, is, it expands local localities, municipalities, and people want more things taken uh, care of you know, taking care of them for them. They want to be, you know, have a caretaker to have a strong arm in power to have someone who's going to preserve them, so to speak. So I do think it has negative consequences from a political perspective, for sure. It does create a vacuum, I think, of individuality. It creates a vacuum uh, of, of self-confidence that the state goes in and fills. In fact, at the end of your piece, you write, in many respects, fear is the opposite of freedom, and fear is a powerful tool for tyranny. Let's hope we can overcome it so it doesn't become our collective undoing. You just alluded to that a, a moment ago, but if people are so fearful, it really is easy for the government to, say, to come in and say, there, there, we'll take care of you, rather than have people say, you know, we need to look out for ourselves and government. You have some proper role, but most of this is on us. Yeah, I mean, you see this on social media and you see this with some people you might know in your individual lives where they're begging, you know, Dr. Fauci to give even more directives right now. They're, they're begging for more mandates because they're so afraid, even with the vaccine in place, that they still have this timidity and fear that their life might be in jeopardy. And so I just think 
living in that, that that would be alien i think maybe to the founders who, of course uh you know which is not a good thing but they dealt with very high death rates and and dealt with a different uh, medical situation in their time so i just think this timidity and fear would be alien to them of course you know you signing the declaration of independence in many respects was signing your life away uh, or the potential to sign your life away at that time because they didn't know what was going to happen but i think if we live in this state of fear in anxiety, it, it just it just creates state encroachment, and, it, and that will continue. I mean, the more fear you have in your life, the more the state uh, grows, the more the state expands, and that's I think true whether you want it to or not. That's just that, just the, uh, the fact of life. Moving beyond the column, but I'm sure this is something you have noted. Uh, one counter failing example is all the people who say, I'm not wearing a mask or I'm only going to wear it when the government tells me, but I'm not going to wear it at other times. I want to get out, get back together with other people. That at least is a positive sign that there are a number of people out there who are ready to get back to quote unquote normal. Yeah, absolutely. And I I think that's one of the, you know, I started out this piece talking about one of the great things about America is the way that they rolled this uh, vaccine out. I mean, it's uh, the Operation Warp Speed. It kind of shows how we're still at the top, that we have all this great medical technology and ability. And the piece is not, it it may be construed by this from ideologues, but it's not an anti-mask piece, so to speak. It really is just trying to delve into the culture of fear and what that means and what that means for society and how it's not ultimately helpful. But you're exactly Exactly right. I mean, I think one thing that we need to look at more is just sort of, you know, look at some of these cultural aspects, because there's, I think there's a tendency for many of us to blame government, to blame uh, Roy Cooper, to blame other governors that are in power, or Joe Biden. And uh, there's certainly a place for that. But I think if we do that too much and don't look in at ourselves and in our culture and how we're behaving ourselves, then uh, I think ultimately then just sort of the partisan bickering um, is not fruitful and it doesn't produce um, change. What it does is just kind of create people to kind of hunker down or bunker down into their own uh, mentality, into their own minds and their own ideologies. And ultimately that's not going to solve things and and create a culture that, you know, sheds fear and is more self-confident and believes in the power of the vaccine and and, and, and gets to a point where we're opening up again and, and, you know, we're united in that instead of constantly bickering. You can explore this issue at carolinajournal.com with the column carrying the headline, Moving Beyond the Mask and Our Culture of Fear. Its author is Ray Nothstein, opinion editor at Carolina Journal. Thanks so much. Thank you.